Thanks, Bill, and welcome to the Myrtle Beach Convention Center and the Republican presidential debate. It's being sponsored by Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, and the South Carolina Republican Party. Now let's meet the five remaining candidates. Texas Governor Rick Perry. Former Senator Rick Santorum. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich. Congressman Ron Paul. And of course, our stage is down one podium with Governor John Huntsman's announcement today that he is leaving the race. You at home can participate through Twitter tonight. You can weigh in on how well the candidates are answering the questions. Tweet the candidate's last name and hashtag answer if you think he's tackling the question, or hashtag dodge if you think he's avoiding the question. Then you can go to foxnews.com slash debate to see the results during the break. You can head there and check it out. Now let's meet our panelists tonight, Fox News political analyst and my colleague, Juan Williams. And from the Wall Street Journal, economics correspondent, Kelly Evans. And Washington bureau chief, Jerry Sy. Our rules are similar to our previous Fox debates, except now answers will be 1 minute and 30 seconds to allow for a fuller discussion of the issues. But follow-ups will still be 30 seconds. Now, in past debates, we've reminded candidates it's time to wrap up with various sounds. We started with a doorbell that didn't work for dog owners, and then we had a digital sound, which seemed rarely pretty ineffective. Tonight, after a long string of debates and with longer answer time, we're going to try to not use any sound. You all have done this now 15 times. I'm sure you know the drill. Uh, but warning, we do reserve the right to bring back the bell if we have to. <laughs> Today, as you know, is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. As we look live at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Washington, its first year on the Mall, we're reminded of one of the many notable quotes from the late Dr. King. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in a moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. This campaign has been filled with challenge and controversy. The challenges are large. Here in South Carolina, the unemployment rate is near 10%, well above the national average. And on this MLK Day, unemployment in African-American communities is near 16 percent. But the controversy on the campaign trail in recent days has been about Governor Romney's record. We are going to talk extensively about jobs, federal debt, world hotspots, and social issues. But first, let's clear the air. Speaker Gingrich, on a debate stage in September, you vowed to, quote, repudiate every effort of the news media to get Republicans to fight each other to protect Barack Obama, who deserves to be defeated, close quote. And yet in recent days, you and your campaign have cited numerous outlets, from the New York Times to Salon.com, to attack Governor Romney's business record. The exact line of attack the Obama campaign is using. Why? Well, first of all, I think that <clears throat> the staying positive through Iowa, through three and a half million dollars of negative attacks, proved you either have to unilaterally disarm and leave the race, or you have to at least bring up your competitor's record. Uh, second, I think it's very important for us to look at job creation. As a young member of Congress, I worked with President Ronald Reagan. Uh, we passed an economic growth package. We created 16 million jobs. The American people, within a framework that Reagan had established, created 16 million jobs. As Speaker, I came back, <clears throat> working with President Bill Clinton. We passed a very Reagan-like program, less regulation, lower taxes. Unemployment dropped to 4.2 percent. We created 11 million jobs. Now, those are real numbers that people can verify out in the open. Governor Romney, uh, as governor, raised taxes, and Massachusetts was 47th in job creation, fourth from the bottom. Now, that's a public record difference. The second part of his campaign 
is citing his experience in business, which is perfectly legitimate. But if that's a part of your campaign, then questioning it has to be equally legitimate. And it struck me that raising those questions, giving him an opportunity to answer them, is exactly what campaigns ought to be about. And we need to satisfy the country that whoever we nominate has a record that can stand up to Barack Obama in a very effective way. Governor Romney, I will give you time to respond in just a minute. Speaker Gingrich, the Wall Street Journal editorial page calls your attacks crude and damaging caricatures of modern business and capitalism. And they write that you are embarrassing yourself by taking the Obama line. How do you respond well, to that? First of all, I don't think ask raising questions is a prerogative only of Barack Obama. And I don't think Republicans should allow themselves to automatically be intimidated because every time you raise a question, somebody yells, you know, you're doing something the Democrats will do. I raise questions that I think are legitimate questions. They're questions, some of which came straight out of Wall Street Journal articles. The governor has every opportunity to answer those questions, to give us facts and data. And I think that's part of his responsibility as a candidate. And I think that's part of what a campaign is about, is to raise questions and see whether or not your competitor can answer them effectively before you get to a general election where you know those questions are going to be asked. One more time. You said last week if somebody comes in and takes all the money out of your company and then leaves you bankrupt while they go off with millions, that's not traditional capitalism. That doesn't sound like a question. I think if you look at the record, part of which was published in the Wall Street Journal, remember, it's very limited public record because he was in a very private company. Okay. But there was a pattern in some companies, a handful of them, of leaving them with enormous debt and then within a year or two or three, having him go broke. I think that is something he ought to answer. Governor Romney, your response. Well, I appreciate the chance to talk about my record in the private sector and also in the governmental sector. And I appreciate the, the speaker's work uh, in, in working in the Reagan years and in the Clinton years. Uh, we did see good growth in this country. I want to see that come back again. Uh, my experience in the private sector took me, one, to be head of a consulting firm that got in trouble and uh, worked to create jobs there and to hold on to jobs. We were in tough times. And then I got the chance to start a business of my own. And uh, four of the companies that we invested in, they weren't businesses I ran, but we invested in, uh, ended up today having some 120,000 jobs. Some of the businesses we invested in weren't successful and lost jobs. And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we learned from the experience. We invested in well over 100 different businesses. And uh, the people have looked at the places that have added jobs and lost jobs, and that record is pretty much available for people to take a close look at. But my record as the governor of Massachusetts and as the person that led the Olympics flowed from the fact that I had experienced turning around tough situations, that I'd worked in the private sector, demonstrated a record of success. By virtue of that, I was asked to come out and help organize the Olympic Games in Salt Lake City. And then was asked after the success of that experience to come back to Massachusetts by a number of people there, encouraged me to come back, run for governor. I did. Uh, we were fortunate to have an unemployment rate by the time I left office of 4.7%. Sounds pretty good today. And uh, I was also proud of the fact that we balanced the budget every year I was in office. We uh, reduced taxes 19 times, put in place a rainy day fund of over $2 billion by the time I left. And so my record is out there, proud of it. And I think that if people want to have someone who understands how the economy works, having worked in the real economy, that I'm the guy that uh, can best post up against Barack Obama. Governor Perry. Governor Perry, you've gone as far as to call what Mitt Romney did at Bain vulture capitalism. But you've also said regulations in America are killing America. In fact, you said we should repeal the most recent financial regulations law, Dodd-Frank. So what specific regulations would you put in place to curb vulture capitalism? Well, let me, let me go back and say that um, having been the governor of the state that created over a million net new jobs, that uh, we're all about capitalism, and I think our record proves that we're all about capitalism. But I visited Georgetown, South Carolina, and it was one of those towns where there was a steel mill that Bain swept in, they picked that company over, and uh, there were a lot of people lost jobs there. And, and the fact of the matter is, we've got records. We've got records. My record is one of those that's been open to the public for quite a few years. And as a matter of fact, my income tax uh, have been out every year. And Newt, I think you're going to let your income tax come out Thursday. 
And Mitt, we need for you to release your income tax so the people of this country can see how you made your money. And, and I, think that's a, I think that's a fair thing. Listen, here's the real issue for us. As, as Republicans, we cannot fire our nominee in September. We need to know now. So I hope you'll put your tax records out there this week so the people of South Carolina can uh, take a look and decide if, you know, we got a flawed candidate or not. But the fact is, on the regulatory side, uh, Dodd-Frank does need to, uh, to be gone. We got too many regulations. Everyone knows that. We are strangling this country with regulations. And we, as a country, need to get rid of Dodd-Frank. We got plenty of, matter of fact, I would get rid of a substantial amount of those financial regulators so that we can, in fact, get back to capitalism without Washington strangling it. Governor Romney, 30 seconds. Oh. Brett, I need a little longer than that. We had a well, couple things raised. there'll be plenty raised. of uh, time. Well, 30 let, seconds for let, this time. Let's take a little more time than that. Uh, first, first of all, <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think Governor Perry makes a, a very good point about, uh, about Georgetown. For those that don't know, it was a steel mill, uh, and, and my firm invested in that steel mill, and another one in Kansas City tried to make them successful, invested there for seven or eight years. And ultimately, what happened from abroad, dumping steel into this country, led to some 40 different steel mills being closed. And, uh, and that was one of those. I understand what happens when China cheats or when others cheat and dump products into this country. That's one of the reasons I'm running, is to make sure we crack down on cheaters. By the way, we also started a new steel mill with new technology in Indiana. That one's growing and thriving. I, I think that experience is what America needs in a president. Secondly, uh, I, I agree with the governor with regards to regulations. Regulations are choking off this economy. I will do everything in my power to put a halt to all the Obama-era regulations, review those that kill jobs, and get rid of those so we can get the private sector working again. Jerry Seib with The Wall Street Journal. Governor, governor Robbie, let, let's look a little deeper at the business record that you're talking about. In a nutshell, what your opponents here are saying is that Bain Capital and other private equity firms buy companies, load them up with debt, take the profits, and then head for the exits. Let's look at another example and allow you to respond through that. Uh, American Patent Paper is a company that Bain Capital bought with $5 million. It took on more debt to expand, couldn't pay back the loans, went bankrupt, and several hundred people lost their jobs. Bain Capital, though, took $100 million in profits and fees. Is that show a flaw in the Bain Capital model, or is that just the rough and tumble of American capitalism? Well, first of all, you never want to see an enterprise go bankrupt, and you never want to see anyone lose a job. At the time I was at Bain Capital, the business was still going and didn't go bankrupt. Uh, what the company did is they had one uh, paper company and then they bought another one down the road and they said we don't need to have in, in an industry that's shrinking uh, two different plants making the same product so let's consolidate the two plants together and all the people in the plant that was closed were offered jobs in the new plant. Now they were union workers, they didn't all want that non-union plant uh, uh, work rule setting. But ultimately, do I believe that, that, that free enterprise works and that, and that private equity and the various features of our economy work to actually improve our economy, to make America more productive with higher incomes and a brighter future? Absolutely. Uh, th th this is a major part of our economy, has been for a long time. Free enterprise, with all of its different dimensions and players, makes America the, the strongest economic nation in the world. Uh, the GDP per capita in this country, income per capita in this country, is about 50 percent higher than the average in Europe. Uh, every time we invested, we tried to grow an enterprise, to add jobs, to make it more successful. And, and I know that people are going to come after me. I know President Obama is going to come after me. But the record is pretty darn good. You look at places like Staples, Bright Horizons, that steel company I talked about, the Sports Authority, they alone added 120,000 jobs as of today. And, and those kinds of experiences are the kinds of things that allow me to know what it takes to get this economy working and to put people back to work. We've got a president in office three years, and he does not have a jobs plan yet. I've got one out there already, and I'm not even president yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kelly Evans with the Wall Street Journal. Congressman Paul. Congressman Paul, this morning when uh, he suspended his campaign, Governor Huntsman said the Republican presidential race has, quote, degenerated into an onslaught of negative and personal attacks not worthy of the American people. You have been particularly scathing in your ads against the other candidates up here on stage tonight. Do you agree with Governor Huntsman that these attacks should be abandoned? Well, they should be abandoned if you're not telling the truth. But if you're exposing a voting record, I think it's quite proper. 